This video is the start of a new series that I'm making on this channel, which is focused on creating a 3D RPG with Godot 4.1. Uh, we're gonna have, at the end of this uh, tutorial series, we're gonna have a little player that can move around a 3D world, that can attack an uh, enemy, can be chased by an enemy, can collect coins, and much more. This week, I'm gonna release three videos of this tutorial. The first one that we are uh, in today is a video where we are setting up our project. We are like setting up Godot to be able to uh, uh, read open the blend file that I've created. I'm giving you the asset by the way, so the asset is available on my itch.io. As you are getting the asset, go also and take a look at my game Lone Knight on Steam that is available for wishlist. It is not released yet, it will be released in 2024, but I am working on it at the moment and it will be very appreciated if you were giving it a wishlist. And just to say that tutorial not going to replace my 2D RPG tutorial that I'm making at the moment. That's, some, that's a tutorial that's going to be alongside the 2D one. I just want to be able to show you how you can make the, the same type of game in 2D and in 3D. So without further ado, now let's get started. So first thing is to download Godot. So you need to go to the Godot engine website, download latest. For me, it is 4.1.2. You click on it and you are choosing Godot engine, this one, not the .NET because the .NET is for C Sharp. Once you have done that, you can just open Godot and then we're gonna create our project together. So I'm gonna click here on new project and that new project, I'm gonna call it Zelda 3D underscore YouTube and I'm gonna put it into uh, my document where I save all my uh, my games for me it is Godot uh, go to game go to for game I think I'm gonna put it into this one right here go to game test I'm gonna put it here select current folder I'm gonna choose the choose the forward plus for the renderer because this is the one that gives me the most advanced 3d graphics available uh, just one thing that I need to do before to create my project is just here I need to click on create folder because you can see right now that our path is empty so here we just need to create a create folder and now uh, it has created the folder for our project and we can create an edit now we are in Godot and uh, one thing that you can notice first is the color is different probably for you than for me. It's because I've took the habit of changing my, uh, my editor and so you, for that you go to editor here, editor setting and then you go here on interface, you go to team and here you can change base color. Me, I've put that uh, 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 X code here, 2F, 2F, 2F. That's just what you need to uh, to use if you want to have the same stuff than me. Or if you don't want, you just have to move this around and wait a little bit and it will update automatically. So now that all of this is done, the first thing that I want to talk about here is how to navigate in the 3D scene. So it's very important when you're making 3D to have a mouse, uh, a mouse specifically with uh, a mouse wheel. Because for example, right now I'm gonna rotate here in my scene and I'm doing that by clicking on my mouse wheel and on moving my uh, mouse at the same time. If you do that but you click also on the shift uh, key on your keyboard you can pan like this. You can rotate and you can pan by clicking on shift uh, and the mouse wheel. You can zoom by zooming in and out with the mouse wheel. So if you don't have a mouse wheel consider to have one because in 3D it's very important. So now we're gonna see how we can set up our um, 3D asset. So I'm gonna go to my project right here and here I have my Blender um, Blender folder. You, you will have this one. This one is available on my itch.io. I will put the link in the description. It is free to use and you can use it as you want. It's for, I've made it for like uh, learning purposes for this, uh, for this series. Uh, if you use it for like making a tutorial and stuff, credit me, please. Uh, like uh, it's free to use, but I'd like to be credited. Uh, so now I'm just gonna take my Blender folder and I'm just gonna drag it into my uh, file system right here and it's gonna import all my assets. Just take a little bit of time. Voila. So now I have my Blender file here my uh, and I've, order, um, I've organized my uh, file to be in a Blender folder, island scene, and inside you have blend file here, you have GLB file, and you have my UI that I'm going to use for uh, the UI um, icon. Uh, normally, you should not be able, if it's your first time in 3D, to open neither the blend file, neither the GLB file, because you need to set up uh, some stuff in Godot. So we're going to go into first project, project setting, and 
and uh, we're going to take a look at the blend file. The blend file is the Blender file. So if you're using Blender like me, you can directly import your Blender uh, file into Godot and use them instead of having to import every time uh, a model that you want to use. So for doing so, you just need to go to uh, project, project setting. We are here in general and you just go down. Uh, it's on file system import right here. You make sure that Blender is enabled uh, on and you can also click advanced setting and here you can like uh, enable some other stuff. Uh, if this is on, then what you can do is you can go to the editor, editor setting, and then here on file system right here, you go to import and here you need to, uh, to put the Blender path. So uh, one thing that is important to understand is that the Blend file work in Blender 3.5 and after. So me, I'm using Blender 3.6 at the moment and that works perfectly fine. And so here I'm going to just show you, I'm clicking on my folder. You can see that right now I uh, directly uh, put my Blender folder 3.6 there. So here for me, it is on my D uh, hard drive and that's it. So if you have if you don't have Blender installed on your uh, PC or Mac, uh, you can't use the Blend file. Godot needs automatically to have you uh, installed uh, Blender uh, for using the Blend file. And if you don't want to use that, you can use also like uh, other stuff like GLTF or uh, FBX or those kind of things. For that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to include the documentation, the page of the, doc the documentation in the description so you can see how to set that up. It's quite, it's very easy easy to do. Me, I've already done it, so I don't want to like uh, redo it, but that's very easy. So uh, now that we have talked about that, what we can do is we can start to create our ground. So for that, we're going to create our first node. And if you are new to Godot, uh, like Godot work with a system of nodes, so I'm going to show you how it works. Here uh, to the to the left, you have 2D scene, 3D scene, user interface, other node. Because we are in the 3D uh, viewport right here, we click on 3D scene and we have created a normal node. This uh, uh, help us to just have a transform and a visibility option in the, the inspector basically. And so now that node 3D, I'm just going to call it main underscore level like this. Ah, level. <laughs> if I forgot the L, it's not going to work. So, and now what we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna do here is we're going to import our ground. So for importing our ground, we're going to click on our main level. We're going to click on the plus here and our ground is a node. And in Godot, like what we're going to do for now is like, I'm just going to use some simple geometry. So I'm going to type CSG and this gives me uh, access to the different nodes that we have uh, in Godot that are already uh, pre-created. So we have a box. So this, this is the equivalent of the cube if you're going in, if you're coming from Unity. We have cylinder, mesh, polygon 3D, sphere, torus, CSG combiner. We're going to use this one. Uh, we're going to use CSG combiner. CSG combiner is a node that we can use for uh, combining different types of, uh, of mesh and we can create different uh, uh, form with that. I'm going to show you. So here I'm clicking on CSG combiner. Now I'm going to attach another CSG. Uh, this time I'm going to use a CSG mesh right here. I'm going to show you why I'm doing that. You can see that for now we have nothing that shows up specifically here. But if we click on our CSG mesh and we go to the inspector to the right here, we have mesh empty. If we click on empty, now we can uh, assign a type of mesh to that mesh that we have created right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, create a new box mesh like this. And now it has created a box, as you can see right here. Remember that for moving, I'm using my mouse. I'm zooming in and out with my mouse wheel. And if I want to rotate, I click on my mouse uh, mouse wheel and I'm moving my, um, my mouse around. And so here I'm just going to click shift and the, the, the middle mouse button. So now what I want to do is I want to change the extent of my, uh, of my uh, cube. So for that, I can do it in two ways. Either I can come here, scale mode, and I can, for example, take those handle here like that, and I can do that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a control Z. I'm going to show you a different way. Here, we're going to click on the mesh, and we're going to go here to the size, and I'm going to put 50. I'm going to leave the Y at 1, and here on the Z, I'm going to put 50. 
So here we have a, a, a little cube of like 50 meter on the x axis, 1 meter uh, on the y axis, and 50 meter on the z axis. So now that we have created that, we have created a mesh. And what I can do is I can create uh, on my CSG combiner another node by clicking on plus, and I can look for example CSG here. I can go for my CSG mesh, and here I can click on create. It's going to create another node right here. And what I can do, I'm just going to show you something quick. I'm not going to use it, but I'm just going to show you something quickly that is very interesting. You first put a mesh on your uh, on your mesh here. So I'm going to put, for example, uh, I'm going to put a new cylinder mesh like this, and I'm going to just change the size, so the radius. I'm going to put it at five. I'm going to put the uh, height at six like this, and I'm going to put the bottom radius here at five. So now we have that mesh that pops up here. And one thing that you can um, you don't automatically notice. I'm going to click here to close that. Is that here? Uh, on CSG shape, we have something called your operation. If I click on it, you can see that we have union, but we also have intersection and subtraction. And basically what this does is that we can either intersect different uh, type of mesh or we can subtract them. So for example, if I click on intersection here, my main mesh right here has been intersected inside the uh, cylinder mesh. And what I can do is like I can do the opposite. So for example, I can click on my mesh here. And instead of intersection, I could put subtraction. And now that creates a hole right here in my ground. I was just looking to show you that because if you are prototyping things in Godot, this is very handy to know. I'm not going to use that, so I'm just going to delete it. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on my CSG mesh and I'm going to do two things. First, I'm going to change the color and then I'm going to also create a collision shape. So for changing the color, I can, I can close that uh, menu here. I can go here to material, click on empty, and I can add a new standard material. This is going to give me access to a bunch of things that I can change. If I click on material right here, I can change here my albedo. And for example, I can change the albedo by going here on color. I click and I choose something on the tab. I just need to remove a bit of the color like this and I just need to go, I'm going to look for something, something like that. Voila, maybe a little bit lighter, something like this. So now that I have done that, you can see the color is different because we have our mesh selected. If I click uh, out of it, you can see we have the color that is created here. So now we need to create a collision shape and this in Godot is very easy. I can just close my material tab, my material uh, tab. And what I can do is I can go back to my CSG combiner right here. And my CSG combiner has an option that is called use collision. And if I click on, it's going to create a collision shape for me, as you can see. That blue line that you can see here is the collision shape of my uh, actual mesh right here. So now we have created our, uh, our collision shape. So now what we need to do is we need to test um, if we can see our uh, game. The problem is that first I'm going to save. So I'm going to save my uh, main level. I'm going to create a new folder here. That folder I'm going to call it levels. And I'm going to save my uh, scene right there. And now I'm going to click here on the play button for launching the game. It's going to ask me to select the current scene, so I'm going to select the current. And if I launch the game, you can see we see nothing. And this is normal because we don't have a camera. So in Godot, you need to always create your camera when you are creating your, uh, your level. So here we're going to click on the main level, we're going to click on plus, and we're going to create, uh, we're going to look for a camera 3D that we can create. Click on create. Now it opens that camera 3D. You can see that we have a gizmo that pops up here. I'm going to change it from scale mode right there to uh, select mode here. And uh, the problem that we have is that we can't see what our camera is seeing. And for that, what you can do is you can just click here on view. And here you can choose different type of viewport. For example, you can put a viewport like this. You can put a viewport like that. Me, I'm going to use this one to viewport at. And so now if I go to my second viewport, here I have a little option that is called preview and you can see we have a camera icon so I can click on it and it's going to show me what the camera is seeing. So now what I can do is I can, with being on the select mode uh, icon right there, I can just take that uh, gizmo here and I can put it around here, I can put it up like that and I can see where my camera is, uh, is watching. You can see my camera is watching this way if I zoom. So right now, this is not a good thing to do. So you can see that my camera is oriented this way. So what I can do is like I can either change the rotation of my camera like this, or what I can do way simpler is like I can just put back my camera where it is, and I can just move that like this, 
and I can move it like this. And so like this, it will adjust my uh, camera on the right direction. If you uh, are unsure, you can check here the direction of that uh, pinkish uh, uh, triangle right here. It shows the cone of projection of your camera. So now we have done that, I can just make a little bit but I can move it a little bit more, I can pull it a little bit more up, and I can also rotate a bit the camera by uh, rotating the red axis uh, of the camera. So now I can launch my game, and you're gonna see we have something specific. Like we can see our green color, but our color is not the same that we have right here. And this is normal because we need to create two nodes, which is the light environment, uh, the light uh, and our world environment, that's the two nodes that we need to create. So for that, we need to click on our camera and we can either uh, add it by clicking on main level and clicking plus and going to uh, take a look on our search bar to like the light and the world environment. But if we click on our camera, we can click here on those three little dots and we have a shortcut. And so here, for example, you can see preview sun, add sun to scene. So I can click here and it adds a directional light uh, node directly here. So now if I launch my game, you can see that we can see our color the same way that we can see it here. And uh, what I can do is I can go to my camera, click on the free little dot, and I can add a preview environment. And I can add environment to scene, like this. Click on it, and it adds a world environment. And so now if I launch my game, I have the exact same thing that shows. Perfect. So now what I can do is I can go to my world environment. I can go here to environment on the inspector, click on it. Then I'm going to go to background, and I'm going to change the mode from sky to custom color. This is going to turn everything to black. If I launch my game, you can see that now my uh, game is black. I can change the color here and what I'm going to do is like I'm going to put a sort of like salmon uh, type uh, color. I don't know, something like something like this, a pinkish color, something like that, a bit vibrant. Voila, like this. So for me, it is uh, 763553 if you want to have the same color here. So I can just click on enter, I can go out. And so now I can launch my game and I have my uh, scene that shows up. Perfect. So now that we have done that, we can close this. And now we can take a look at how we can import our player. So that's it for me. I hope this video has been helpful for you. If it's the case, don't hesitate to give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I would like to get to 10k this year, so that will be very appreciated if you can subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, also, go and check my game uh, Lone Knight for a wishlist on Steam. That would be also very appreciated. And me, I want to thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.